Niagara, we saw down here at the intersection, off the interstate, it looked like a real bad wreck. The whole top was pulled off that little car. Now, I don't know, no one knows the details, just remember that situation it looked really bad. I mean, you know, it, it looked terrible. But anyway, remember them in prayer. And uh, turn, if you would, to uh, the book of Joshua, chapter 24. I'm going to read verses 14 through 16. Uh, while you turn there, I'll, uh, well, probably the time you get there, I'll be done reading, but that's all right, right? Amen. Uh, I'm so tickled I got. I had to go back to glasses because I didn't take my contact lenses out and I've done some damage to my eyes, but now I don't have reading, I don't need reading glasses because I got these regular glasses. See, see how complicated that is? It's uh, it's real interesting. But I can see now. So anyway, Joshua says uh, to the Israelites, now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood. And in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, or the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Ammonites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Let's pray. Lord, thank you again for the opportunity to be here. Thank you for the folks whose purpose to come out tonight. I pray that you be in each and every class and each and every thing that's uh, trying to be done here tonight that it would, uh, our purpose, Lord, is to spread your word, to help the young people come up and learn something that really matters here, God. And we pray that you uh, be with me tonight and help me to uh, bring something to be of use to somebody. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> we come here to the, uh, maybe not the last thing that Joshua ever said, but, uh, about the last thing recorded of what he said. We don't know everything that we said, but we know what God wanted us to know, so that's what we have. And Joshua had been the leader of the uh, Israel after taking over when Moses had died. Joshua, if you uh, if you read that book, he uh, he had a lot of victories. Life wasn't all victories. Uh, but he conquered a lot of uh, large territory as the uh, leader of Israel. And on his watch, uh, uh, divided the territories amongst the tribes of Israel. So he accomplished a lot. And Joshua was the leader when Israel crossed the Jordan River and entered the land of Canaan. I heard somebody say it the other day, uh, uh, the land of Canaan. It's in West Virginia, I believe. I don't think that's where that happened, actually. It's the land of Canaan. But he was the leader when they circled uh, the town of Jericho and watched as God... Uh, Cause the walls to fall in. And remember that uh, the troops had to circle the city once a day for six days. Now, if you think about that, and if you ever watched any kind of a movie about wars or fighting or anything like that, you have to wonder maybe what those soldiers was thinking. You know, because this, you know, they're probably thinking, what kind of a tactic is this? You know, we haven't uh, we haven't shot an arrow, we haven't pulled a sword. How can we possibly win? Uh, how are we going to defeat Jericho? But, uh, but what man doesn't understand, God has already settled. Amen? Amen. And uh, crossing the Jordan, uh, and God took care of that situation, and crossing the Jordan with two million people, that's asking, of course, was no small feat either. It says that uh, all of Israel passed over the Jordan River on dry ground. Uh, some have tried to explain this by saying that an earthquake might have caused the... Uh, river to dry up and all sorts of other scientific explanations but uh, I think I've got a better answer and God uh, because God said that's what would happen and God uh, God can do whatever he wants to do whenever he wants to do it amen and uh, God caused a miracle to happen right there and they crossed over into Jordan but a lot of this is I tried to study for the uh, lesson like really I just have to think that Joshua was a man of faith. Now, of course, God did the miracles, but Joshua was put in a position of leadership because he was a man of faith. Remember when uh, they went to uh, give the report? Him and the other guy gave a good report about, uh, you know, we can just back in the other uh, the book 
before this one, we'll Exodus, no, whatever, whatever one before this one. Yeah, well, you know where it's at, sorry. Uh, but he was just a man who uh, thought positively, and he, he was a faithful man. He was a man of faith. Uh, maybe not a man of great talent, perhaps. Uh, just a man who was willing to uh, believe what God's promises were. You know, I found out something uh, over the years. Uh, I can say over the years now, I've uh, been saved for 32 years. Hard to believe that. I won't tell you how old I am. You can ask my wife. Uh, and she'll just tell you that I'm older than she is. Amen. But I found out something over the years and uh, being involved in church. God don't want the most talented person. He don't want the... Uh, uh, the person with the best pedigree. He doesn't want the person that knows the much. He just wants somebody, a man or a woman or a boy or a girl, that's going to be faithful and believe and say, here am I, Lord, send me. That's what God's looking for. He's just looking for a good heart, and I think that's what Joshua had. Um, I have to think that with all the past things that uh, Joshua had uh, seen God do, uh, had such an effect on Joshua's life that he could uh, he could say, as yes, for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. <clears throat> uh, but what I'd like to look at tonight is the part, and it's right down here at the bottom, uh, verse 16, and the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. That's what I'm going to talk about tonight if I had a title. I don't have one. But I would call it other gods. If I had a pen, I'd write my title in. I can't do it now. I'm just kidding. Thank you, Brother Byron. Uh, anyway, other gods. Now, there's always been an effort on the part of Satan to try to get folks to worship anything or anyone other than the one true God. <laughs> You can spend a week probably trying to name all of them. And I won't uh, try to do that. But let's just say there's hardly a creature or a planet or a natural occurrence that hasn't been worshipped by various people at various times. People say, well, uh, well, how sad that some of these poor ignorant folks would be so silly as to worship uh, the sun or the moon or a cow or a cat or even a man. You know, people just... Uh, but that's the work of the devil. He, he's always trying to divert us from the truth. <clears throat> but I was thinking that maybe the gods of old have been replaced in our society by the gods with a different name. Maybe they're not worshiping the sun. After all, after all, we are uh, we're an enlightened people. Uh, we have technology and everything at our disposal, and uh, we're pretty uh, we're pretty smart, I guess, in a lot of ways. But uh, maybe we're not like some of those poor ignorant folks who's worshiping the sun or cows or whatever. But uh, maybe we're worshiping things we shouldn't. Before I go any further, that I want to define what the word, word worship means as a noun. It's the feeling of reverence or adoration for a deity. If it's a verb, it's to show reverence and adoration for a deity. And maybe we have a problem uh, with other kinds of gods now. Maybe we don't even realize it. Maybe there's a god that we have a problem with called the god of entertainment. You know what? We must absolutely be entertained. Now, I know some of you in here is in my uh, age group. Uh, you know what? Uh, I'm old enough to get the senior discount, but Jeff, I ain't taking it. I just, I just say I ain't taking it. You know, I might get to the place where I need it or want it or what. Now, if it comes to a restaurant, I might consider that. You know, but I just, you know. I don't, uh, I don't feel like that uh, I need to be uh, considered a senior. Then I look in the mirror and I realize what, what they're talking about. But, uh, <laughs> but the God of entertainment, we've absolutely got to be entertained. And you know what I was getting around to, I went down a rabbit hole there for just a second. But uh, when I was a kid, growing up back in the whew, last century, amen. <laughs> Man, we didn't have all the entertainments 
like some of the, well, there's no, well, there's young folks in here, but some of you's younger than me, some of you ain't. But, uh, man, we, we used to go outside and just have a blast all day long throwing rocks at each other. You know, dirt clod battles, anybody ever do that? Can I get a witness? Somebody bear the marks on your body of a dirt clod battle. And there'd always be some punk kid in the crowd that put a rock in the dirt clod. Amen. And you ever get these reeds that grow by the banks? And they have the clod of dirt on them. And you hit each other with them. And we had a good time with that. We was easily entertained. We go play football in the mud and dirt, just the ball, you know, a bunch of kids. We knew how to entertain ourselves, but it's changed a little bit now. We've absolutely got to be entertained. You can turn on the TV and we uh, we started streaming here about a year or so ago because I get fed up with the cable companies and, you know, and I get aggravated and uh, uh, I started streaming stuff. And I'm not really sure how it works because you know, sometimes I want to stream something and they don't stream very good. And you get that little circle on your TV and I'm not being entertained, you know. And I resent that. But there's a lot of technology out there today. And uh, you can turn on the TV and you can find anything you ever thought of to watch. True crime, false crime, romance, horror, adventure, comedy, mystery, romantic comedy, documentaries, ghost hunting, live shows, sports. If, uh, if you happen to be watching a Chiefs football game, you can watch, you can get a two for one. You can watch a football game and get to watch Taylor Swift at the same time. Amen. I mean, how can you beat that in life? <laughs> Some of you know what I'm talking about there. <clears throat> but we become obsessed with being entertained. I mean, we just, we just can't have any damn time to where we, uh, don't have our face in a computer or a cell phone or whatever. Time Magazine just named uh, the of all the people that are doing really good and valuable things in the world, okay, and changing people's lives for the good, they managed Time Magazine named Taylor Swift as a person of the year. I thought, man, that's, that's, that's something else. She's everywhere. But as a society, we've become obsessed with being entertained. We feel like we're going to miss something. The God of entertainment. We turn actors and musicians and sports stars uh, into heroes and uh, think they're not being worshipped. Look at the crowds in a football game or a boxing match or a baseball game. Watch the crowd. <laughs> People cry when their team loses. People get really, really emotionally involved over a bunch of, and I, you know, I'm a, I'm a sports fan. Believe it or not, I used to play sports yeah, before I become so fully well-rounded. You know. A lot of y'all don't know this. Back about 24 years ago, I was pretty buff for about three months. And uh, didn't hold, but uh, you know. But I got no problem with sports or any or even being entertained. What I'm trying to say is it's got to be kept in the right place, and we shouldn't put anything in front of God. People cry when their team loses. People remember when Michael Jackson died. People absolutely went insane. And the debate rages on to this day. Who's the greatest basketball player of all time? LeBron James, King James, or Michael Jordan? And on it goes. And how much time do we spend? at finding new ways to occupy our minds. In spite of all the technological advances, folks, we're getting dumber. I'm going to give you a couple things here. Uh, the God of entertainment's really kind of taken over. This is from an actual poll. 7% of the Americans that were polled actually believe chocolate milk came from brown cows. <laughs> it's better. A sign in a swimming pool. Do not breathe underwater. <laughs> this, is, this is the future, folks. <laughs> Man, it, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, we're, in spite of all the technology and everything, we're not, we're not getting smarter in all the ways. We're getting dumber. We've got our face are always buried in our TVs or our computers. I was up there the other night. I have to, I have to confess to this. Uh, yeah, I wanted to watch Alabama and Michigan. 
don't really watch much college football. I said, I want to watch this game. So we got a streaming through ESPN. I had literally just watched a game two days before. And I got a message that said I was not authorized to watch that. And I went through a 35 minute process of logging in and getting an email and a text sent to my phone and logging in and the special email code expired and trying to log in. So I called the ESP or the cable provider number and I got the ever present recorded voice message which says, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. Please try again. <laughs> and I became absolutely incensed because I couldn't watch this and be entertained for a while. Okay? I've got the phone in the hand. I've got the TV right there. And I feel this. I'm going to run it off. I won't be entertained anymore. But see how obsessed we get with it. I, by, by, by the way, I never saw any of that game. I never got logged on. I'm canceling ESPN. I don't care about <laughs> But anyway, we don't want to miss anything. We have to know what's going on. Uh, people get hit and in car accidents and all sorts of things all the time because they're texting. Man, you can't miss nothing. Ooh, so and so texted me. Uh, I got to find out what's going on here or there. The God of entertainment. I'd have to believe we'd just uh, turn it all off for a while and spend some quality time with God. We'd be doing a lot better. Choose you this day who you will serve. We make a lot of choices in the course of a day. Thousands, really. Some are important, some are not. But we need to learn how to choose. Uh, choose right. If I got a resolution, I don't, I don't really make them anymore because... I think I'm over for 57 uh, on resolutions. So I kind of gave up in a lot of ways. But if I were to make one, I, I'd want to try to spend more quality time with God in the coming year. Just to try to do a better job for Him and not feed the flesh side as much as I do the spirit side. So there's a God of entertainment. entertainment. Well, how about the God of self? You know, anybody with a cell phone that's not a Blackberry can take a selfie now. Have been able to for a long time. And, uh, you know, if we don't like how we look in the selfie, we can use a filter, Brother Jeff, to filter ourselves to where we, and others, I guess, will like the way we look. I haven't updated my, I do have Facebook. I, I know, you see, I just get on there and see what everybody else is doing. You know, I just personally can't wait to get on Facebook every day just to see what everybody had to eat yesterday. Man, they're doing good. I haven't updated my profile picture in seven or eight years. Why? Well, because I look better then. You know, I really don't want anybody to see what I look like now. But what I'm saying is that uh, 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 we're obsessed with uh, our, ourselves. Uh, if we don't like the picture we have, we can delete the picture. If you, can, if you get mad at somebody on Facebook, I have something called I deface them, or I unface them, or I block them, or whatever. So we're really into ourselves. Uh, and people, man, I mean, several years ago, this is how obsessed we are with ourselves. People, uh, or several years ago, they came out with something called a selfie stick. I don't have one, but I know that I see people doing this all the time. No matter where you go, they're doing selfies. You know, look here, look here. And they post it. And do you realize that a lot of people put stuff out there like that so they'll get enough likes? Look, I got 27 likes. But so and so didn't like my picture. I'm going to unface them. What I'm saying is that people's entire self esteem and their value system seems to be tied up in what everybody else thinks of them. Maybe we ought to be a little bit more worried about what God thinks. The God of self. We're always trying to improve ourselves, trying to. The, the makeup industry is a 
trillion dollar industry. The health and fitness industry is a is a huge industry. <clears throat> it's January, holidays are over. All the good food has been replaced with stuff I don't normally eat, like vegetables and vegetables. <laughs> it might a piece of broccoli if it's comes out of a chocolate fountain, Brother Biber. <laughs> now, I'll tell you what, if you really want to you want to get Brother Biber motivated to eat something off on an eggplant. I'll tell you that story sometime. <laughs> That's the only thing I ain't seen that boy eat. Well, actually, he ate that. It just, uh, it just didn't agree with him, we'll say. But anyway, but we're always looking to improve ourselves, and, you know, it's January, and uh, like I say, it's time for resolutions. People, you know, get a treadmill, they uh, go to the gym. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, our body is the temple of God. We ought to try to you try to keep it in shape. But there's nothing wrong with that. But it should not be an obsession. I've learned that uh, for a long time I, I fought to try to stay at the same weight. And some of you can identify with this. You'll hit a certain age, probably about 40, 45, and you'll just get tired and give up and buy bigger clothes. Amen? That's what I did. Because it's all kind of temporal anyway. But, uh, I mean, the God of the God of self. We're, you know, everything's about ourself. If you watch an athlete, man, I'm getting so tired of this. A guy just makes a regular play on the football field and he's got a dance clear the other end zone or something silly like that, you know, just because he did what they're paying him to do. So everybody can see, look at me, look at me. That's the God of self. That's to be an entire lesson right there. I could go on about other gods. There's plenty of uh, things to distract us these days. You make thousands of choices and decisions every day. How often do we choose to serve God? And it really is a choice. Uh, I, I can say this as 32 years as a Christian. It's not an easy thing to do. You know, I always, I always felt like it, it'd be a lot easier if you just didn't have to go out in the world every day. You know, it feels like you're having a good spiritual day and then you, <laughs> then you go to work. You know, and the way I kind of think about it is this, you know, it's like, you know, you get up, maybe you read your Bible and you have a little prayer time and you, uh, you head out and, uh, you're just, we're just so right. Listen, the world, there, there is evil all around us. It has gotten so prevalent. We don't even recognize it anymore. So it has to be a choice. But really, if you think about it, choosing to serve God, as Joshua said here, there's not a whole lot else that's going to matter or mean much when it's over with. Nobody's going to care how much money we made. Nobody's going to care how many touchdowns we scored. Nobody's going to care how many likes we had. Nobody's especially not going to care what we had for dinner yesterday. Amen. Uh, I think we get so bogged down and tangled up in our own situations we forget the seriousness of the fact that we're going to stand before one true God someday and our works is going to be tried. Now, if you're a Christian, that's we're not going to get thrown into hell, but it's a shame that most of our and most of our works are like wood staying humble. You just burn up. Didn't amount to nothing. What do we spend our time on? I know that you've got to have a job. I know there's responsibilities and everything like that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, in our free time, what are we spending our time on? I'm going to close with this. I don't know if you're not, you maybe ought to be familiar with uh, St. Paul Bunyan's Pilgrim of Progress. I keep wanting to call him Paul Bunyan, but it is. Uh, it's John Bunyan's Pilgrim of Progress, and there's a part where they, uh, there's a guy in a room called the Muckraker. And what he does is he's been offered a celestial crown in exchange for his muckrake. Now, I'm going to read this here. I couldn't, didn't have room to write it down, and I sure can't memorize it. But I'm going to read this part right here. And it says this. 
In Pilgrim's Progress, the man with the muck rake is set forth as an example of him whose vision is fixed on carnal instead of spiritual things. He also typifies a man who in his life consistently refuses to see anything that is lofty and fixes his eyes with solemn intentness only on that which is vile and debasing. Now here's a direct quote from the book. The man cannot look no way but downward with a muckrake in his hand who is offered a celestial crown for his muckrake but would neither look up nor regard the crown he was offered, but continued to rake himself the filth, the filth of the floor. Now, that word muck rake, if you imagine a rake, it's a stiff rake behind it. Muck is like a muddy slurry with just pieces of straw and sticks, and you can't rake it up, brother Jeff. And this guy, if you ever uh, get one of the old copies of the Pilgrim's Progress, it's an old man who spent his entire life just looking down and never looking up at anything spiritual. Never looking toward God, never realizing that there's a there's a whole other set of rewards that we ought to be thinking about and looking at, just constantly just raking. Never accomplishing anything. Can't rake it all up. And I have to wonder sometimes... I know it is me. Is that us? What are we spending our time on? What's really important? I know this. That they told me when I was a lot younger that life would go by. The older you got, the faster life would go. And I tell you what, it's going faster all the time, folks. We've got a really short time amount of time down here. We're like a, we're like a vapor. Our lives are like a vapor. We're just kind of here and we're, we're gone. We need to make the most out of our time and choose which God we're going to serve. I mean, it is a struggle and it is a problem, but what are we called to do? What are we supposed to be? If we're not the light, then who is? You know, the only Christ some people never want to see is in us. Are we, are we even trying? I know a lot of times for me it's just easier to quit. It's just easier not to, not to even, you know, do what I should. Choose you this day. I'm finished. I'm gonna turn the service over to Brother Jeff. Can we do announcements or what are we? I don't, I don't know what any of them are. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Brother Jeff. Keep that, keep that verse up there, Brother Jerry. That, that was a really good lesson. It says. Forbid, God forbid, that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. And, uh, just a little personal testimony. Uh, and I just love our church. I mean, I just love, if you look two or three years ago, we didn't have a vision, really. We were just trying to see where God would lead us and not to see what we accomplished and by what we've accomplished, what he has done in the last 16 months. But I sat there thinking as the, the new year came in and, and the older I get, the more I realize I sit, and the things that you were talking about, entertainment and sports and things, doesn't interest me as much, but it also brought to life that I only have so much more time to run this race for God. And the older you get, the more you realize that. And I say, if God gives me seven to ten years, maybe of good health, I, I see where that my first 25 years of serving God, I could have done so much more as a younger person, than what I had time left to do for him. And, it, and I want to do more for him. And I, and I think that's a great point that, that we get so wrapped up in everything else that we just miss the mark sometimes. But if we would just all look at that verse every day this week, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord 
to serve other gods just this week and the rest of our the year, how much more can we do for God than we did last year? And that, I, I really, I really like our, our message we've got this Sunday and, and we can't live on the past blessings, but we can look back and thank God for what he brought us for, but that just means we need to run the race a little harder this year. Because, trust me, the devil's not going to quit running the race. He's going to give, he is going to really crank it up this year much more than he did last year. And just like when you see the young people, man, the things that they have facing them, just the morals that they have facing them in school every day, in everyday life, I didn't have to say, I did not have to come up with those decisions of, of what what they have to what what's that got facing them and the things that, that they see this world going through. So that was Brother David, I really appreciate that lesson and want to do more for him. So let's remember that. Remember to pray for all the ones that are sick and afflicted. Like I said, if you can drop a card uh, uh, to Don this week and to those that are sick and to, to maybe to uh, uh, Adam's grandmother, those that have uh, had surgery and are sick and trying to get over it. I know uh, uh, on the deacons and elders, we usually talk every day or so, but uh, it just seems like every week on Monday morning we get text, pray for this, pray for that, and pray for that. And I'm so glad I got a church that can continue to pray for it. So let's, let's remember that. Uh, some of the things we have coming up, let's don't forget, we'll just let us, well, we're right around two months now from our missions conference, and this year, missions conference, we'll call in March.